interpretive dance. Her foot glides gently, if perhaps a little wobbly, along the deserted sidewalk beneath the night sky, but she declared that she was a dancer, offering up a brief demonstration, despite the handicap of a cocktail too many. She pirouettes, he stands still, hands buried deep in pockets, vodka's warming afterglow faded away, wondering why the cold doesn't bother her, with no hat, scarf hanging loosely about her, dangling fringe moving with her, making him feel less somehow, doubting what he sees in her smile. Is she really more at ease at life, or is it just another mask, no different than his pose of world-weary cynicism, fighting back romantic daydreams, which he can never quite keep away, even at three in the morning, as she offers up a brief curtsy, along with the realization that they will only be passing acquaintances. He will never know her well enough to truly answer any question about her. <laughs> Empathy. The creature sniffed her hand cautiously, having long been conditioned to be leery of kindness, quick to anger, and ready to pounce. Believing a blood-soaked muzzle might please a master, as unconcerned for his sentry's needs as he was for his brides. Another trophy, one through guile instead of wooed with affection. Deep within those caves, dripping water echoing off cold stone walls, she knelt beside the three-headed beast, gently stroking each of its neck, knowing in the end that all animals are the same, wishing to please, blind to their master's faults, whereas her eyes were open, well, almost. Despite all her care, she had missed that one decisive trick. Who would have, felt, who would have thought ill of pomegranate seeds yet? That was all it took to trap her and bind her to another's expectations. Thank you. Wow.